Sure, hey, my evening. My name is Moon Jinx, and welcome to Buried. Now, Buried, as you can see right here, is the interactive story, which part will change on the basis of choices you make. And it's not really a game, to be said, but more of a story. But, however, it is an interesting concept to have, and I'm really interested. So, yes, we're going to play it for it. Okay, so, here we go. I open my eyes and the first thing I want to do is scream. I fly at my back and everything seems to hurt. The trees overhead look familiar. It's clear that the night the clear night sky, almost beautiful. Except for the fact that this means I've been out cold for at least six hours. But there's something wrong. I don't remember what, but something happened and my head. My god, my head hurts. And a ringing in my ears. Was there an accident? An explosion, I think. I remember Dennis screaming. But after that, I can't remember. As I sit up, I notice my head hat, my hard hat has been thrown off. I look around the area, but it's not here. It feels strange to go there without my hard hat, but I've got to find the other members of the crew. They could be in danger. Okay, first choice. Okay, so possibly getting the hard hat is a good thing, but if your crew members are hurt, then the first, like, Hour is really, really important. So if they need that out, it's better we go for them. However, as it says, it's been six hours, so maybe <laughs> then they might not be alive. But if there's any chance of us helping any of our mates, we should go for that. So forget the hat, search for the crew. I decide my hat can wait until I figure out what's going on. I get up and take a look around the lodging site. I smell something burning. I don't hear any engines running. Wait, something isn't right. Wasn't it the bulldozer? Maybe the damn thing overheated for the last time. Maybe the engine finally blew. What a mess. Or maybe I'm jumping to conclusions. The only one way I can find out, I guess. I walk over to the center of the logging site. I don't like what I see. Oh, that's not good. That's really not good. The logging site looks like a bomb was detonated right in the center. I don't know where to start. The one low we managed to stack on the truck for the day is overturned. The trailer bent and all the logs hanging off the back. Where the hell is everyone? My head is killing me and it's ringing in my ears. I can't hear anything. Not birds, not my footsteps, nothing. It makes me wonder if I hit my head after the, my hard hat fell off. I run through a quick mental checklist to make sure my brain is still working. My name is Roger Hastings. I am 41 years old. The year is 2017. I own a small logging company and we've been logging into this strip as a Kentucky Woodlands for almost a month now. Okay, so my, bone, my brain works fine. That's a relief. What makes me fearful because something is certainly not right here. I look around the logging site. My mind is try, trying to figure out what happened. What has happened. Just as every piece of equipment has been overturned or tinted. Hmm. Okay, well. The truck will only have, won't tell as much. I think I'm gonna look at the, the, the bris. The bris or debris? Whatever. We'll look at that. Maybe that can help, like, like depending on where it was when the explosion happened, you can kind of tell where the center was. The bris is debris everywhere. There are fragments of the five gallon bucket I kept our work rags in, a loose saw chain, and an overturned gang caster. Had there been an explosion, all the fuel on the site would have started a fire. There's no charring, no burning, nothing. I walk for the area where Janus had been working. Film looks like he'd been moving slowly. We've only taken four da down four trees today. He's been a lot watch is open. Indicated that he's been taking an early break. He's not here. No one is here. Where the hell is everyone? I was trying to make a call on my cell phone, but it's battery's only running really low. Not that that matters. So it's out. There's crap out here. I'm not gonna waste the phone battery. We might need it later, and if this if the reception's really terrible, then we could be just wasting it. Better to yell out, I think. Hey guys, where is everyone? Tony, Dennis, Frank, Joe? But their names fall flat amongst the wreckage. I get nothing back other than scaring away a few birds overhead. Might as well start walking, try to find some answers. The highway's almost a mile back through the woods, down the gravel world where we used to reach the site. Maybe the crew ran that way for help. But why would they just leave me? Were they scared? Other sorts? 
Maybe I can catch up to them. But my truck turned over to its side. It looks like I'll be walking. My god. I can't even remember what I was doing before waking up on my back. Wait. What's that? And then it's a bulldozer. Oh my god. It's a leg. It has to be either Tony or Dennis. The doors look unstable. Like it might roll some more. Might not be safe to get close. But anytime, I just can't leave him there. Okay. Well. If it's under the bulldozer, there's not really a good chance of survival. But. I think if it was me in that situation, I would look. I would have to go look. Just to be certain. Don't, please. Bulldozer, don't roll over and kill me. Hey, I yell. Are you okay? Are you alive? I skipped over the stray logs and make equipment to get closer. Seeing the bulldozer. Dozer, tea that makes me think I maybe I should grab my hat. I can see a bit more of the leg. The jeans look soaked in blood. I recognize the boot boots. It's clearly telling me. His leg is bent at an impossible angle, nearly crushed flat. Because I get the more African comes at. Tony didn't survive. I'm gonna leave the boy alone because again there was three other people that might need my help, and if I waste time looking after the dead person, they might you know get even worse. So I'm sorry, Tony. There's nothing I can do for him now. I start to back away slowly. In my shock, I stumble back, slowly tripping over one of the straight logs. Oh, come on. I bang my head hard on one of the logs I fall. Instantly feel like a massive lump forming in the back of my head. I should have grabbed. <laughs> Damn, why didn't I grab my hard hat? Really? But what hurts more is the realization that Tony is dead. Looking at him, I feel like I'm something rising in my throat. And I don't know if it's scream or vomit. But I push it away. If I lose my cool right now, the... There are too many questions that will go unanswered. Shit. I can't even believe this. Tony. He had two boys. He coached his son's baseball team. He was the hardest worker I had. And one of the most honest and reliable men I knew. This isn't right. I can't stay here. I have to find Dennis, Frank, and Joe. I have to find out what happened to you. Oh dear. As I walk through the stacks of logs from the last week or so of work, everything feels frozen. This high-pitched sound in my ears is terrible. And it keeps happening every few seconds, and it seems like it's coming from far away. I can't help but wonder, is it my ears, or is it something else? The silence over here is creepy, and this smell. Look at the atmosphere after a bad summer storm. Might as well admit it. I'm a little scared. Everyone's missing it. It's dead quiet out here. There doesn't seem to be a breeze to wash all the leaves and branches. My right knee hurts like hell. My head is hurting so bad. Before that, I never noticed a pain in my knee. I must have heard it during the... Well, during the war. Accident? Wait, is that Dennis? I can see sitting on the ground motionless about 30 feet away. I wouldn't yell out. If I saw my friend... Um... Was still on the ground, I wouldn't... Probably wouldn't yell. I'd probably run up to them. So I'll do that. I'll walk up. It's not like he's armed. It's not like he's on the edge. So hopefully he won't, you know, attack me. He's just sitting there, not moving. So I walk up slowly next to him. Dennis, hey man, can you hear me? I tap on his shoulders. He looks up at me from the ground, clearly coming out of daze. Yeah, what do I hear you? He says. Dennis is built like a wrestler and has the toughest, tough personality to match. But this moment, he looks disoriented and even a little anxious. Now I'm glad to see him. The feel on his usually confident face is alarming. What the hell happened? What's going on, he asks. I must say, don't know the crew is missing. Uh, because one, we don't know. <laughs> and two, the crew is definitely missing. And I don't want to give them um, any answers. Like, if I if I say, like, explosion, I feel like um, he'll want more answers for me. I don't have any. Missing, Dennis says. Where do you think they went? I'm not sure, I say. That has me pretty freaked out. Something's not right here. Still sitting on the ground, he looks around the woods as if he can just now understand the severity of the situation. The equipment was overturned, the doors is too, I say, right from the forehead. You okay? I ask him. Yeah, just checking up. Me too. This might have been the most intimate conversation Dennis and I have ever had. While he and I have always been on good terms, we're never pretty close. I've always respected him though. I'm sure he's come to work a few times looking like he's been in a bar fight that night before. But I've also seen him doing a futuristic impression of a dinosaur that he played with Tony's kids when they're waiting for their dad to finish his shift. It's then it hits me. Dennis and Tony were good friends. I'm not sure I want to rat him with the news of Tony's death right now. 
Not before we know what's going on, but he has the right to know. I feel like we have to tell him. Right, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Dennis, and it won't be easy, but you kind of have to tell them. Um, you know, just in case. Um, he has a right to know. He should know. And, like, I feel like if we don't bring up now, it will later. So, I might as well tell him the truth now. Um, so that we don't have to apologize for lying to him. Oh, God. You are upfront about Den Den Dennis about Tony. Dennis's eyes fixated on me, startled. He, he was crushing on the doors, I say. Dennis paused for a moment, like he's trying to understand what I said. He's out. It's narrow, and his bottom lip crumbles. Shit, he says. And I can tell you that he's fighting back tears. He and Tony has always been tight, almost like brothers. Hey, he quickly. He has quickly. If I was trying to escape the reality of Tony's death, did you see that light? No, I say. What did you see? I don't even know, Roger, he says. It was like this flare of white light. It came right up the ground like an explosion. So there was an explosion, I say? Maybe it was some equipment, or... This was no equipment. Dennis interrupts, agitated. It was a sh Huge ball of light came right out of the damn ground. Well, I'm gonna ask where it goes because we only know it looks like it looked like a huge ball of light, as you just said. Where did it go? It just shot up into the sky like it, until it was out of sight. When? I'm not sure he answers, but if I finished about ten trees for the day and I was about the top one, that's when it happened. You're almost done with ten trees, I ask. Yeah, he, he says. He's looking at the ground, you know, I didn't want to make, I want to break till I was done, and that's when the light blew up, why, you don't believe me? I don't think it'd be able to lie, um, in this situation, um, they try because he's strange things, but don't, I believe him, in what he says, you believe in this story? He saw what he saw, I think to myself. He has no reason to lie about this. My god, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine, he says. But if I'm being honest, it's getting me pretty bad. And if it's all the same to you, I'd like to get the hell out of here. We both stand up and start heading towards the world. It isn't until we start moving I see Dennis is wounded. His right side is covered in blood, red seeping through his blue work shirt. There's splatters of it here and there. There's also a very large splash that makes me worry. Uh, okay, well, if he's a tough guy, he's not going to admit he's in pain, so I want to say, how'd you get that injury? I'm not sure, Dennis replies. I must have gotten thrown or hurt somehow from that light. It's then I notice that the strange ringing noise is still filling the air. Hey, I say, stopping. Do you hear that high-pitched ringing notes once in a while? Dennis looks scared when I ask him this question, and he just nods. I feel it's just me, he says. Looks like it's sorts and uncertain. I've never seen them this way before. It's obviously, it's obvious that he's been looking for something more assurance. Even though I'm his boss, there's something very unnerving about this. Ooh. I would love to say we'll be okay. And probably that's what the, you're supposed to say to, in this situation. But, I don't want to say it's probably nothing. Because we don't know. Like, a ball of light came out of the ground. And, like... Like, an explosion did happen that toppled our heavy equipment. It's probably something. It's not nothing. It's something. So, yes, I'm going to go to him and hopefully, like, me saying, yeah, it's freaking me out. Then we'll have this mutual, like, like, this is all freaky, but we're in this together. We're both freaked out and we just got to stick this out together. I'm sure I sound scared, but I don't really care. I looked at Dennis and see my confusion and fear sipped into him. And there's that disappointment expression as well. I think so. As if he expects me to be stronger, so we're sure that we'll be fine and nothing out of the ordinary is happening. Probably, but... Nah. We both start moving forward and don't say another word. Did you try to kill Frank, he asks? I know he had his cell on him today. Not yet. I think he still have some battery left. I pull out my cell and call Frank. Happy I didn't make that call it. Dennis earlier. Yes. It rings but he doesn't pick up. Then my his phone go off behind the stack of logs. Dennis and I give each other a look. As the phone goes the voicemail I hang up and we walk behind the logs to find Frank's phone around abandoned. We look around for Frank and find nothing. Not a single trace. 
The same I noticed something really odd. A ten foot wide hole in the ground right near his phone was. And there's no stray piles of removed dirt or rocks. It's clean. It's really dark, cutting into the earth wide, but only a few feet deep. It's unnatural, like the ground's just as a leak to it, no shovels or diggers use. Dennis walks over to it. This looks like the same kind of hole where I saw the light coming from the ground, he mutters to himself. I say nothing. My mind is spinning, but I don't know what to think. We need to get out of here, Dennis mutters. That moment that ringing noise carries through the forest again, sending shivers down my spine. Dennis is right, there's something strange going on, and we might not be safe here. But that ringing sound could be a clue to where the rest of the crew went. One member of the crew is dead. One is missing. One we have no idea. I don't think we'll find Frank. And we found Tony, but he said Joe. I don't know, I think he's. Hold on. The sound is our only cl clue. I so want to go with the greed, let's get out away from here. Because everybody says they do that in a horror situation. They're like, oh, I wouldn't stick around in the whole house. I would just leave. I would just go out the front door. And then until you're <laughs> kind of in a situation like this where you realize just leaving isn't always like this, the greatest option to you. It's not. I mean, sure, it might uh, allow for you to survive, but everybody else, perhaps not, which doesn't make it always the best situation or a solution to a situation like this. So I'm gonna say no. Let's check out that sound, because as it says, where the rest of the crew went, and there's a possibility that someone could be alive. Frank could be alive. Joe could be alive. And for that reason, we're gonna check it out. He's gonna hate this. Something's not right, I say. And then if there's a mechanical sound, like noise like that, you think someone's out there? He asks. Maybe. I just think we should at least check it out. They might need. May be able to help. Yeah, you go right ahead, he says with a grin. I'll be here waiting for you. Better hurry though. Dennis looks like doesn't look like he's in the best shape to be charging around the forest, but he needs my it's my way too. We shouldn't split up. We should not split up. But if he's seriously injured, it's gonna be a problem. But like if I leave him out here there's nothing to protect him. Because what happens if there's an explosion? We don't know. There could be another explosion happen. And it might not survive the next one. And, you know, let's. It's better when we're friends. So, come on, Dennis, come with me. No, you're coming with me. I bend over and hoist him against his shoulders. He resists, but just barely. And then gives in. He's looking like. He's looking at me like he's terrified of me now. Making a moan in his throat. <laughs> oh god. Oh, what have I done to him? We start moving through the woods quickly. With no idea where the rest of the crew is, I worry they could be in danger. Every tree out here looks exactly the same. I go over the country and find my way around the forest without much of a problem. I'm feeling dizzy. I'm leaning against a tree when I see something that has no business being out here. A logging crew has been out here for three weeks and I've never seen it before. What is it? Ooh. Hello. You should not be here. It's a small building. Sort of like a mixture of a shack and a bunker. It looks like it made of concrete, but moss, reeds, and plain old erosion has made it look like some sort of mystical. It looks like something out of a demented version of a medieval fant fantasy movie. What the hell is this, Dennis asks. I shouldn't guess. I did this before, I said this before. I shouldn't guess and pretend I have some answers. Uh, because I don't have any, and Dennis could easily say, well, what is, doesn't seem right, but I have no answer, so let's go, and I have no idea. You purchased this land, right, boss? Dennis asked, didn't you survey it? So, did I say, getting a lot of defenses, but this wasn't here. Do you think the others maybe went in there, he asked nervously? Why would they do that, I asked. I don't know, but they aren't out here, and they aren't inside, they're probably dead like Tony. He looks at the ground as he says this. I want to go inside, not just to find my crew, but also to appease my curiosity. The ringing noise is coming from inside. But something about this place seems incredibly strange, especially with it located all by itself out here. It simply does not belong. 
I wonder, do we not could just go in? Dennis asks. I can tell he's trying to make a joke, but it falls flat. I'm starting to think his humor is a defense mechanism for his fear. We both look ahead and take a moment to realize what we're about to do and start forward. We're getting more than three f feet closer when Dennis above us. So reach out and steady him. That's what I would naturally do. I reach out quickly, shaking my injured knee. I barely make it in time, grabbing him under his arm and keeping him from hitting the ground. Yeah, if I say okay, he's just gonna splat into the ground and make it worse. I'm okay, he says. Just can you help me walk for a little while? Just help me inside, please. I cannot deny his request. I've never seen him this week and it's a little uncomfortable to see. Makes me glad I decided to keep him with me. Yes, because he could also bleed out while I'm in there. Which is another thing I should have thought about. I helped Dennis into the weird little building. The front door opens easily, even when there's clearly a lock on it. Maybe the lock was supposed to keep something in. It's hard to tell. I can still hear it. Here, here, that ringing noise. It's definitely coming from here. Stretching out in front of me is, is a small interior to my the outside. The building is totally empty. There's a concrete floor and a dingy, featureless walls. There are no windows within the place that even more isolated feel. Still, we hear the ringing noise coming from somewhere in here. It's louder now. More prominent. The interior seems confined at first, but there's a tall set of concrete steps leading about. Leads about five feet down, revealing a corridor. Oh dear, that is not good. It's a massive corridor, in fact, like it's some kind of building on the ground. It seems to go on forever. This corridor is mostly dark with emergency lights every 10 feet or so. I assume we're now in the underground because this corridor extends far beyond the walls of this building we entered. I realize that someone might not be appreciated as finding it here. Was that footsteps I hear? Don't do that. Don't do that to me, game. Um. Okay, if we tiptoe quietly, then it's gonna be more of a shock if people find us. I think we should walk quickly because, like, Dennis is injured. I'm technically injured. I've got a lump on the back of my head and an injured knee, and Dennis could need medical supplies. If we tiptoe quietly, he's just gonna bleed out more. Um. So we can, you know, if someone does find out, we can just say we wanted into the next, into the nearest building to find some medical supplies. So. Time is off the essence as well for our friends, our crew members, because we also wouldn't need that help. I'm eager to figure out what's going on here. I step to echo loudly in the dusk and the dirt. This leads on me for support. If there is anybody here, it's not like we're trying to be quiet and stealthy with the intention of sneaking up on them. If anybody is listening, they definitely know we're here now. As I carry Dennis to the far end, to this otherwise fearless place, I feel a flight of concrete stairs leading down. I have to sit Dennis down on the floor. His weight is killing me. Dennis, are you okay? So worry, man. He says, I'll be okay. I just need a minute to rest. But looking at him, I'm not so sure. I can still hear the ringing noise every so often. Coming from somewhere in here. I look ahead at the concrete stairs pointing towards him. So Dennis sees them. Can you make it down those stairs, I ask. He stands up slowly, invisible, making effort not to fall back down. Yeah, he says, sounding a little irritated. He stands for the stairs without me, but I have no choice but to follow. We approach the stairs and just by looking at them, I get a sense we're crossing some sort of line here. There may very now be no going back. Uh oh. As I head down the stairs, I notice that they look aged. That damn ringing noise is somewhere below, louder than ever. I feel like I'm walking down the cellar of a haunted house. The lighting becomes scarce as the stairs take a certain slight turn. I can feel the temperature drop. Then it makes it a few steps down before he's leaning on the wall. He's breathing like he's just finished the marathon. We shouldn't leave him behind. And yeah, give him a break. The guy is badly injured. Let's take a break, I say, putting my hand towards his shoulder to help steady him. This is off. Sigh. Thanks. I don't feel too great, boss. As we both squat down the stairs, my silence is a lock in the unknown fate of the rest of my crew. Frank is married, and I've just met his wife a few times, and I swim with a huge laugh. My heart sags a bit, and I realise I might never see Might never again get to hear him belt out our classic rock tune during lunch break. Joe. Well I don't know too much about him, he's twenty two years old and is considering community college. His folks are deadbeat, so he's been fighting for himself ever since the age of sixteen or so. Maybe I can still find them and still get to hear Frank singing his deep, baritone voice after a few many 
few too many drinks. After a few moments, Dennis says, all right, let's keep going. We both stand up, leaning on each other. I have to make Dennis stay behind me as I took my foot out and search the next step. I can't but feel like a child. As a very powerful feel sees me, as I'm protecting a monster, we tell the darkness slice in my phone. After what feels like forever, we'll come to the bottom stairs. We're closer to that ringing us now. A door sits securely in the wall and just looks out of place here as I feel. A shiver the light seeps through it, illuminating the area. The door looks what has a panel a lot of, of labels and lights. A small embossed print in the panel says Level 01 Entrance Gate Transport Sector. There's a bottom of the label. It's probably a elevator, I'm gonna guess. Or the door button, the open door button. But we shouldn't expect it first, because who knows? It could be it could be any button. It could be the button to uh, kill intruders. The panel looks like some guy stick or alert system of some kind, which they were meant to communicate some status. Lockdown engaged, experiment in progress, shut down engage. Those all seem to be off, but one on the phrase is slowly blinking a red light next to it. The only powered light in this whole thing. A normal entity breach. What the hell? I slowly push the door open when Dennis suddenly steps in front of me, taking the lead. Let's go, he says. I want to find out what the hell this place is. As Dennis walks through that ringing or beeping or whatever, it gets a little louder. The door closes behind us with a click. I can't help but notice the, the wobble. Dennis step is a little grunt. You sure you have enough to keep going, I ask? It doesn't matter. I don't want to be in the woods right now. He seems scared. Something I've never seen before. Angry, yes. Upset, yes. But Dennis is never scared. We kind of know what he says. What he says, sorry. Because he said, but he's terrified of something. So, if, but if I say, what did you see? It might be like, oh, it's just white ball light. Creeps me out. So if I ask what's so dangerous, it kind of leads to a conversation of what is actually terrifying him that's in the woods. So, I'm going to go with that. I don't know, he says. But I don't think there's anything that there to hurt us, but that doesn't mean it's safe. There's just something wrong. It started with a flash of light. It's like it breathed life into those woods. And whatever life it breathed, I, breathed, I don't think it was any good. It didn't say anything because it sounds crazy. I've been so preoccupied with my own fear, I nearly forgot about the ringing noise. It had just become background noise. It took a few more steps, and I can now see where we are. It makes no sense yet. Another thing that simply seems out of place. The shapes and muted colors of metal are easy to identify, but it just doesn't belong here. End of chapter one. How interesting is this? This is such a unique way of like, uh, gameplay style. Respect the dead. Oh. Ooh, okay, respect the dead. You and 36 of players left Tony's body where it found it. You and 76 per players were up front, but with Dennis about Tony's death, trust. You and 55% told Dennis to believe you saw him. Most people went to investigate the ring sound, and most people bought Dennis. What if you didn't bring Dennis? You just go off on yourself? Would that be it? No, we not bring Dennis with us, man. Okay. I'm loving this. It's very creepy. And I've always had problems uh, reading words out loud. So this is another reason why I chose to play this game now. Just to kind of force myself to do it with it. Um, to force myself kind of to read more out loud. And to kind of be better at it. Because I stumble over words quite a few times and I skip words. And yeah. I think I've always had, so I decided to play this game one because it's really good. It's a, uh, it's a really good. Uh, I've heard it's got a really good story and to help out with my reading out loud. But yeah, I love it. Interesting that all like I've done most of the popular ones except for Respect from the Dead. Well, I wonder what happened. It's very interesting. I wonder what happens if you did different things. I wonder. But I assume, like, if you're not a front mirror, then it's about Tony that will come to bite you. Dennis will be upset if you didn't believe his story. 
Maybe he wouldn't refuse to come with you. I don't know. There's a huge amount of possibility in these stories. I wish there's, like, a lot more, like, these types of games out there. And I guess you can, you know, argue whether or not it is actually game. Since there's not really a lot of gameplay. But it is an interesting story. And I would definitely argue that it is a game. But anyway, we are just going to do these in chapters. So that was chapter one. So chapter two will be up for tomorrow. So anyway, that's it for this video, guys. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, why not subscribe? More awesome content. Merci.